bright leaf gets its signature hue is anything but poetic. It happens in a noisy space toward the back of a winding plant. Racks of regular old hot dogs, the color of wet sand, float via elevated rail track into a steel-plated tunnel which shakes and shudders like something out of Willy Wonka's fanciful chocolate factory. Inside, red coloring showers down, and finally, behold, the Franks emerge in all their shimmering sunburst glory. <laughs> Voila! Man, when I when I read that, you know, I immediately thought, um, obviously, you said Willy Wonka, so I'm like, wow, what a way to explain our process. And it took me to Charlie's face, like when he walked in there and started seeing that factory <laughs> and started seeing all those amazing things. It was a brand new experience and like that wonderment and enjoyment that went on his face. I literally felt that when I read it and I thought, man, this guy hit it. And that's, that's what I feel like when I eat Briley hot dogs. And when I see somebody who's never tried it, they try, they, they get this new unique experience where they buy it through like, you know, I've never had anything like this before. This is different than anything I've had. This is a really good hot dog. You, you said a unique experience. Yeah. And and really that the uniqueness of Bright Leaf hits you right when you lay eyes on it. It doesn't need to get all the way to your taste buds. Because why? Well, they come in a bag. Um, this is like our signature bag of Bright Leaf hot dogs. We have a two pound bag, a one pound bag. Uh, we make these hot dogs fresh every day, which is something that kind of sets us apart. So we're using fresh beef, fresh pork, and we're making it every day. Uh, a salesman may go into a store on a Monday. We get the order that night. We're making it Tuesday. It hits the store Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a it's a difficult process to manage, but it's so worth it. And it makes a difference. Uh, and they're red. I mean, this might be burning out the lens on the camera, which the whole thing might be right down the tubes. But the, but they're bright bright red, and that all goes on right in back of us here at this factory in Smithfield that's been here for decades. Yep, uh, been here, built in 1939. Uh, the company, uh, Carolina Packers, been here since 1941. Uh, and we have been making these hot dogs the same way that we have since back then. So it's the same formula, same beef and pork blend, and the same secret Southern Spice blend, which oh. everybody wants to know. Sure, go ahead and tell us. Yeah, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you just a second. But the good thing is we protect it so much that none of us here actually know the full recipe completely we it's literally under lock and key with our spice supplier who's been our supplier since 1941. so there's only a select few that could get their hands on it but we do not have the papers floating around here it's sent to us mixed up we're ready to go and it's something we don't plan on sharing with anybody because it's special well if we can apply some peer pressure so everybody when you see kurt be sure to pressure him for the secret recipe but you mentioned how fresh these things are when when i came here um, I mean, I love the people were fantastic. I love the, the brightness of the hot dog, the story of the hot dog. But you told me, I'm going to give you a bag of these and you take a bite on your way home. And I was like, I don't, I don't have a grill in the car, Kurt. I don't got a Winnebago. I, you know, I can't hit, hit this. Like you said, no, people eat them raw, right? People eat them raw. I grabbed one out of the bag. I took a bite. It was delicious. No, I wouldn't do it with a, with a name brand hot dog that you see all over the world in these vacuum bags. Yeah. But I did it with this. It was great. Yeah, so uh, w one of the funny stories is a lot of our fans, uh, they always talk about how they get a bag of Bradley hot dogs. They don't quite make it home without a hole getting in the bag because on the way home, <laughs> you go dig in there, get one out and eat on the way home. Of course, when you're grilling, most of us that grill these hot dogs regularly, this is our snack. So as we're getting it ready, even though it don't take long to heat a hot dog up, you know, we're getting this out. Maybe you're cooking chicken on the grill or you're doing something else. You got to have a bag of Bradley hot dogs as kind of your appetizer. Um, now, so they're great out of the bag. Uh, they're great on the grill. Uh, you can we, we have a little pancake grill thing here. We'll probably cook some up later uh, and see how that goes. But you really can't go wrong. In any, any way you cook them, you're going to have a great hot dog. You said that you heard stories about people getting into the bag before it gets home from the grocery store and whatnot. But you hear stories all the time, I bet, about Bright Leaf because Bright Leafs are really embedded in the culture of Eastern North Carolina. Joko, that's Johnston County. Uh, particularly but when I talk to folks they they had stories about I remember church revivals after the revival we'd get out on the lawn and bright leaf hot dogs were always there I had a first date and bright leaf hot dogs is is where I took her after baseball wins the prize was bright leaf hot dogs I mean tell us about how embedded in the culture this stuff is and why it's uh, that it's important so when when the company was founded uh, in the early 40s, 
uh, dealt with a bunch of tobacco farmers, folks that had livestock, uh, and they created a market here for where to bring your livestock. And the nature of tobacco farming, just like anything, is cyclical. So, you know, you're, they were looking for something to kind of smooth out the income. Uh, by, by starting this meat processing plant, uh, they were able to do it, and Mr. Jones, who founded it, was going to make a hot dog unlike anything North Carolina had ever seen. Uh, and, and so we had Brightleaf born at that point in time. But a lot of the farmers and the local folks around here, they would come here, and this is where they bring animals, they would eat the food here. And this, you know, we're deeply entrenched in tradition here, so like, it was part of the thing. If you were coming to get food, uh, coming up, before there was as many varieties in the grocery store as there is now, you know, you were kind of limited to what you could get locally. And probably hot dogs, bologna, smoked sausage, these things were available and local, and they were always in the fridge uh, of folks growing up. And even, even when I was coming up, I always had a couple of these items in the fridge at any, any given time. So I always had a pack of bologna, had a pack of hot dogs, and it was just well known, you know, this, this when, when you come here, if you're in Johnson County, you're gonna eat Brightleaf hot dogs. But not just in Joko, you guys fan out to uh, the, the coast, and you go way up to Hickory, we do. Um, one of the one of the great things uh, over time is, is the word has gotten out, right? We, we've we've wanted to expand, and uh, so we've been able to do some of that. Uh, and so we started here, you know, locally, Johnson County. We we kind of went into Eastern North Carolina as a big thing, and then after doing a lot of shows at the fair and just seeing all the people's faces after trying the product, and they're like, "I'm in Winston Salem. I'm in Greensboro. You know, how can I get this product?" And so we, we would make the way to do it. And we distribute the stuff ourselves, so it's not as easy as us just saying, yeah, sure, we'll be there tomorrow, because yeah. we're not warehousing these bag hot dogs. They're made here fresh, we put them on the truck, and we deliver them ourselves. So we have to work a route out to get it there. So that means they kind of now gotta you know, leave from here, get there, and make it back in a reasonable time. So it limits our ability to get as far as we want to get. But we have been able to spread out over time. Well, Good. I think we need to start working on making the hot dogs. Um, and while you're getting all that set up, I'll say that I heard I talked to Leo Daughtry about uh, Brightly Hot Dogs. You might know Leo's name because he was in the General Assembly for a long time, a great lawyer in uh, Smithfield. He said he's got a grandson who goes to the University of Southern California who, who brings back Brightleafs with him to California every time he comes back to visit the folks in Joko. And he doesn't share them. Leo made sure to say he doesn't share them with his uh, California roomies. They're all for him. So people are crazy about these things and they love to, to get them in faraway places it reminds them from home uh, of home yeah uh, and th these are some of the other really cool stories that we've heard over the years in tw 2018 we did uh, launch our website that would handle online ordering uh, easier for the user but prior to that people would always call us with these special requests hey how can I get Bradley hot dogs to some state that's yeah. not North Carolina and, and we would work it out. Now things have gotten more affordable and a little bit easier, but um, those stores are great. We literally get them almost on a daily basis where, where people were calling. Somebody told me about these. I bought them, shipped them to my house. These are the best hot dogs I've ever had. Or uh, we have somebody uh, who every Christmas they send a package to somebody <laughs> in Hawaii that's on a military base there. So And this has been going on for probably seven or eight years. They call, hey, it's that time of year again. We're going to do it. There's that extra shipping cost and getting perishable product that has to stay cold all the way to Hawaii. Right. But people were doing it because they can't find anything quite like Bradley Pot Dogs where they're at. So, uh, it, those are great. People have stories. a real thirst for that, or hunger rather, for those things that are part of their community and, and the surrounding community. They haven't been like globalized, they haven't been super nationalized or anything. There's something special about it regional treats yeah and that's uh one of the reasons we like to kind of stay doing what we're doing like with the fresh bag our fresh uh, product we do have uh issues of always having enough inventory on hand all the time because of our business model and and we're committed to making it fresh and sometimes that means we're going to run out sometimes it means we're not going to have it so we have these pressures of you got to get this out to the world right you have to get this product there and we're like yes we want to do it but we don't want to sacrifice what is made brightly hot dogs and the product we make so so good. So uh, we're going to kind of inch along and do what we can, but we don't want to change formula. We don't want to change the way we do it. Um, and we want to make sure we, we give our customers experience that, that we uh, had a blessing to have when we first tried it. Why do we need to do with these? We need to, we need to flip these or they, they're just doing fine? They're just doing fine right now. They're hanging okay. out. So uh, 
one of the e easy things to do, we were trying to do it here so it would, it would be easy, is putting on this griddle. I've got it up on kind of a medium heat. Uh, you take the hot dogs right out of the bag, now you keep them cold, make sure they're refrigerated. There is a date on the neck of our bags, so if you see there's a little tag there, always look and try to make sure you get a good fresh product. Uh, we do our best to rotate everything in the stores, but always check that date, make sure you've got plenty of time before the sale or use by date. Pull them out of the bag, you throw them on the griddle, and we're probably going to give these about seven minutes time. Right. So, and, and my goal is I want to get them good and charred. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to put a black streak down right. the side of them and get them good because yes. just, it'll just make it taste a little bit that, better. That black mark on them, that turned up in a lot of interviews. Yeah. People really look for that and, and they want that. And uh, it's part of the whole uh, visual appeal yeah. of the thing. Yeah. Speaking of visual appeal, I, I want you all to know that Kurt did shave this morning. We talked about <laughs> it. And it's just amazing how that grows. <laughs> hey, let's talk about some of the other products because you sure. mentioned some other products. It's not just hot dogs. What are these guys? Sure. Uh, red Hots. This is one of the things a lot of folks uh, will mix up is our hot dogs and Red Hots. Very similar. Both red products, right? Uh, the Brightly Beef and Pork Hot Dog is the flagship item. Uh, we also make Red Hots, which is the same beef and pork blend, stain made fresh, just like we do everything else, but we've got some crushed red pepper in there, mm. so it gives it a nice kick. And always people say, well, how hot is it? Well, it's not so hot it's going to knock your socks off, but what we always tell people, it gives you a nice, warm sensation, and there's we call it like the afterburn. So when you, you cook a Red Hot the same way you do a hot dog, now you can split them, put them on a biscuit, throw some cheese on it, whatever, but... Uh, or you can eat it right out of the bag if you want, but it gives you that the brightly flavor, and then you've got this heat that kind of comes on. You feel it, and then it kind of comes off. So it's it's not not too uh, not too hot. All right, what, what's what's this? This is our hickory smoked sausage. We make an all pork smoked sausage. It's got all natural casing, smoked over real hickory wood chips. So we have real smoke houses here. Oh, that's so cool! So, I mean, if you ever get a chance to get a tour, that that that's really cool. The so, smoke, uh, and that this is one of the best smoked sausages you can find. Uh, we have our bright leaf, old-fashioned hickory smoked sliced bacon. This right here is just a good old-fashioned bacon. There's just salt. There's no sugar in it, so you're going to get something really good. Yeah. We got our bright leaf barbecue. Now, when we were, we were looking at doing barbecue, we've got Eastern barbecue, right? And with Eastern barbecue, uh, of course, it's very vinegar-based. See that black streak right there? Can you, get that, can you get that black streak? Yep, you're looking at that black There's magic streak. right there. <laughs> There's so many people watching this right now that their, their mouth is watering, they they see that, uh, they're ready for a bright week. But, but uh, with barbecue, you've got Eastern and you got Western, right? So your Western North Carolina, you got more tomato base, uh, and Eastern North Carolina, more vinegar based. And because we're trying to appeal to more than just Eastern North Carolina, we make sure our barbecue is somewhere in the middle. So it's not tomato based and not super sweet. It's not super vinegar. It's right. kind of right in the middle, so it's a good balance. And we've had a lot of good compliments yeah. on that. And then yeah. we also make uh, a real chili you can find in the cold section. So it's a real beef chili uh, that complements our hot dogs quite well. Okay, and then I do want to say something special about this this product right here, the bologna. So uh, one thing, uh, you know, like making record albums, songs get left out, get left on the cutting room floor. And just like putting out a magazine article, things get left on the cutting room floor. One of the things that was in the story originally was that you have a stressful job. And that you know you get stressed out sometimes you got to ship these hot dogs all over the state far and wide you got to the red you know everything's got to be right people you're under a lot of pressure and when it gets too much what's your where do you go <laughs> where do you retreat to okay all right um so what, one thing i do want to mention on, on that is is this is a hard business the meat industry is a hard business uh not just for me it's for everybody here if we did not have the group of people we got uh, bright leaf hot dogs will not be what they are and everything else because I'm telling you we got a great group of folks here um, from everybody from the guy that runs the Skinner and he run, run it, uh, uh, Trini and Claire there in the kitchen you got people stuff so you got all this stuff going on everybody's working really hard so we've got these stressors which find a way to, to t deal with it when I walk down there I love to open the cooler where we're chilling our bologna so you have these big old sticks of bologna and the smell is just it's like it's something so wonderful, it's hard for me to put it in words, but no matter how I'm feeling, I can walk in there, all the kind of stuff could be going on, just be like, just give me a second. 
All right, all right, let's go oh. right to it. Now we're good. And it's just, cause it's, it's just amazing. You cannot get this anywhere else. Um, you know, you want to get addicted to that, though. you got to watch it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just, you know, just just a little bit now. Yeah, you can't yeah, go every day or something no. special, but uh, no. there's always the draw. You know, just go down there in that baloney coat. All right, cause, well, now we have to hit that before I leave. Okay, we yeah. Hit that. We'll uh, that. You're not the first bird to work here at uh, Bright Leaf Hot Dogs. No, sir. Uh, my grandfather worked here in some capacity over 60 years. Um, he's still an honorary member on the board, but uh, he worked here. My dad worked here, and my uncle worked here. Yeah, yeah. All, all that. I yeah. didn't realize but, that. But it's not. There's a lot of folks here just like me. Yeah. So there's a lot of folks who's had brothers, cousins, sisters, everybody that's worked here. Uh, I think we met the plant manager or something when I took the tour, and yep. boy, we did. You you two got together, and I think it was like. 57 minutes of you guys talking about your common people. It was a, it was a lot. Yeah. yeah. And so now everybody's a family. Yeah, that that's Chris Moore. He's great um, down there. It, he really helps make everything move down there. Uh, it's outstanding. So uh, we, we, we actually have a, it's a funny story. Him and I were in the same elementary school together in Brentwood, which is actually in Raleigh. And we didn't know it until we got here and started working together. All right, um, now we can't. You can't get into the people like we don't have forty-five more. Minutes. Oh come on! All right, no, no, no. Uh, okay. uh, all right, so uh, do we need to start with the hot dogs now? So we're going to make the hot dogs in a way that's recommended in the July issue of Our State uh, magazine. The editor Elizabeth Hudson, who's wonderful, does a column in here on Carolina style, uh, and uh, the Carolina style, Kurt, is mustard. Onions and what what else? So Carolina style would be Carolina slaw. You definitely have slaw, to have uh, slaw. Yeah. You got to have onions and yeah. mustard and chili. And chili. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So. And and for Elizabeth, that's the only way to eat a hot dog. And she said some disparaging words in there about ketchup, but I didn't understand that at all. <laughs> but um, but uh, we're going to try it that way. The this article also gets into some of the great places to go in Joko for a bright leaf in a setting that it is equally Joko uh, in its atmosphere and um, they have a whole the county put together a whole bright leaf red hot dog trail that you can find online and follow it along to places like Cricket Grill in downtown uh, Smithfield which is a, a real experience um, the old time grill right down the road in what is it Four Oaks Yep, for us. I mean, so, that is a fan. That's a fantastic place. There, there's a lot of great iconic hot dog joints around the state, and I mean, here locally, it'd be hard to name them all. But you, yeah, you've got Crickets, you got Millie's, you got Old Time Grill, you got the Grocery Bag there in Clayton, uh, Jones, Grocery Jones, bag, Jones yeah. Cafe there yeah. in Clayton. Yeah, um, just a lot of really great places. Uh, if you want to find out where they are, we've got a great locator. It'll tell you where you can find Bright Leaf Hot Dogs, uh, whether you want to go to a grill, whether you want to pick them up at the store, and tell you how to find all our products. You can just check out our locator, and I'm sure they'll have a link for you at some point. Okay, so this would be the Carolina style oh, hot dog right here. I'll leave this for you, sir. Thank you. Look at how beautiful that is. You almost don't want to bite into it, but I'm going to. Are you gonna make one? I don't want to start eating, but I mean, no, you know what? No, you go don't, ahead. Don't Come let on. me hold you up. I don't want to hold you up. All right, I'm gonna dig right in. And I apologize to the folks out there who maybe don't have one, or oh, maybe by now they have grabbed one. All right, Carolina style. Let's see. Oh, mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> awesome. One thing they don't teach you. You know, in journalism school, is how to eat a Carolina style brightly, <laughs> elegantly. Right. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. You can. I really don't. Mm. Uh, oh man, I love that hot dog. So tell us again about all the spices that I'm tasting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you all about. It. You got your pad out and your pen and start the list out. <laughs> so it's uh, it's a special mixture of southern spices that you're only gonna find in a bright hot dog. That's for sure. Is there salt in it? There's definitely salt. You can find some salt, but not too much. So I've never heard somebody say your hot dogs are too salty. So yeah. normally it's, it's, it's right. But it, it has some bit. kick to it. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit. Not, yeah. but not like like the red hot. You mm. will know if you eat a red hot. You will feel that heat. The hot dog, you just can say, there's some spice there yeah. that I, I'm not sure I recommend, but it's really good. Right? No, I totally agree. He's not. He, that's just not hype. It's true. It's true about the Brightly. 
Um, I was at a 4th of July celebration down in Moorhead City where they, it was like a big street party. They had hamburgers on the grill, of course, um, but a, lots of bright things. I mean, lots of red hot dogs on the grill up and down, up and down that block. It was fantastic. It's awesome. And one of the things we did try to do is since most of the, the hot dogs are in the bag, to be able to reach some of these further places in North Carolina like Hickory and Greensboro, we actually take a vacuum package and we do vacuum pack a fresh hot dog. We still make them fresh. And we put them in a bag, so there's a vacuum pack in a bag. Mm -hmm. And so the customers that are further away that might not be able to benefit from us being able to get to them really quick, we get these hot dogs to them. And mm -hmm. if you take that vacuum pack and open it up and you put it in the bag that we supply with it, and if you don't have, a, you know, for some reason don't have a bag, you can use a Ziploc, but definitely we have a bag around the vacuum. Just open it up, put them in that bag, let them sit for a couple days, mm -hmm. and you will get the same experience you get here right. because it takes time for these flavors to further develop in the package. So that's one of the other special things is in this loose bag, these flavors develop. You're aerating it kind of. Kind of, yeah, kind of, yeah. It's kind of like that. It's, um, you know, have you're from Chicago, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, from up north, and uh, uh, I know you are big on deep dish pizza. Yeah. They've got some old hot dog stuff up there. Yeah. Um, I know red sauce is pretty big with folks from up north too. Who's yeah. making the best red sauce, right? So I've got some folks in my extended family that uh, through my wife that are from up north. So one of the best things I like to do is talk to folks that are, what, what's your secret red sauce recipe, mm -hmm. right? How do I make this? But when you make that sauce, it's always good right then, right? You're tasting, you're like, this is good. But whether you're making lasagna or meatballs or any kind of pasta like that, is it the best that day or is it better a couple days later? Yeah. It's about a couple days yeah, later because right. that sauce has time to kind of all those spices get to get all those flavors and they just develop and then you have just a much better tasting tasting meal when, when you're making that so that's the closest thing i can describe to what happens in this bag for these hot dogs what now what what's the the best uh drink to have with this what well, what's your favorite we need to pass one of that napkin will you thank you sir what do you recommend folks wash it down well if you're in north carolina you know you can go with cheer wine uh, or, yeah. or anything like that probably would be Pepsi. good. Pepsi, yeah. Um, sweet tea. Of course, water. Honestly, Briley hot dogs are good with anything, but yeah, sweet tea. Yeah. You missed it. I didn't say something about sweet tea. So. <laughs> I think Elizabeth says Coke. She, her dad had got her trained on uh, on Coke uh, with, to wash it down. Um, how much more time we got with Mr. Kurt Bird? Good. All right, we got the another five minutes, which I was hoping to hear. Um, so uh, do tell more about some of the things you've heard from people about the Brightleaf experience in their life and how Brightleaf not only lights up the grocery store shelves, but has, has lit up uh, their lives. I want to give credit to Angie Locke, uh, Judge Tom Locke and Angie Locke. Uh, they had the vivid memories of the, the church revivals and uh, the Brightleaf's cut. Uh, it's sliced into... Uh, into baked beans and, and, and things like that. What, so what are some dishes that you've heard about that you can make with bright leaves? Oh, so, so certainly, you know, the hot dogs and baked beans, uh, pigs in a blanket. Yeah. Uh, you know, t take it, you can take this hot dog and do a few things with it. I don't know that there's anything better than just eating the bright leaf hot dog as it is. Yeah. Of course, it's gonna add some to it, but it's got so much flavor uh, in and of itself. Uh, there's not a whole lot of things you do other than you make some like kind of cool stuff for kids, you know, curly cue it and make yeah. kind of stuff. There's some interesting stuff. Uh, people have asked us for years for a corn dog, okay? Mm. And we have looked into it, I promise. Yeah. We've looked into this. It is very difficult. It's not something we can do here. Uh, we've actually talked with folks like at Atkinson's Mill, which is also in North Carolina. We talked about that as a possibility. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to make it work, but we haven't given up, so we're still trying to figure out how to do that. <laughs> that would probably be the next best thing you could do with a Brightleaf hot dog is figure out how to how to get a corn dog uh, produced in a way that we could get it out to folks where they could they could have. Well, it. Well, uh, throw it open, you know, make yeah. it a crowdsource thing. Yeah. Who's got the best idea on that? Yeah, if somebody can figure out how to do this, uh, that we, you can make it at home, but without it taking you know forever. How do how do we get this out here? And if yeah. anybody's got a good recipe that people can follow, we would love to hear it. We would really love to hear how do you take a broccoli pot and make a really good corn dog at home. So do you have like a R and D department? Like, is there? Because <laughs> I didn't see that on the tour. Is there a group of folks working on the next level? No, we. We are definitely a very small company. We're a family-based company. That's why most of us here do more than one thing. So it's not just me. You can pick anybody here, and we have to be flexible. It's just the nature of the business. Um, we 
do not have an R&D department. Uh, R&D department may consist of the general manager, the plant manager, assistant plant manager, me, uh, in, anybody. Just we're gonna if, if there's something coming up, we kind of figure out how to do it. We don't normally have uh, a situation where we've got a lab set up and we're gonna do this or do that, and we have to pick and choose what we do mainly because of time, because we're busy making hot dogs, and secondly, uh, batch sizes. So we can't just do like 10 pound tests. We have to do you know a 200 pound test. Yeah. Uh, so if we're going to do something, we got to be pretty sure. Yeah, this is going to come out right. Yeah. So we've, but, we've done a few things here or there, uh, hot smoked sausage and stuff like that. So some special things. Some special things. Yeah. Is there a Christmas dog? Anything uh, like that? You know, <laughs> we we do have some really cool Christmas packages where we're kind of mixing up a lot of our products and mm -hmm. gift bags and mm -hmm. baskets, um, which. For me, I'd much rather get something I can consume than yeah. anything. Like if you're gonna oh, get man. me something, just get me some special, some special food item. And like, that's where we hear a whole lot of stories at Christmas is because people were thinking, what can I do special for this family? And they're, oh, what better than to share the wonders of Brightleaf with them? And so we yeah. we have packages with all our products. We also do country hams here. We do spiral sliced hams here, which right. are really big for Christmas. So instead of hot dogs, people are looking for that ham. Yeah, let's take it back to the issue. Again, I mentioned that the uh, Road trips are a big part of this. Uh, I'm a beach guy, so my road trip last weekend was to the beach. My road trip two weekends from now is gonna to be to the beach. Um, and then I'll visit the relatives up in Chicago who are gonna say, what are you, what is this Brightly hot dogs? But I'll evangelize for you. What's your, what's your, what are your road trips coming up for the summer that you're excited about? If well, you can get away. Uh, well, get, getting away, uh, so maybe somewhat of an issue here, but I'll say for anybody that is road tripping down 95, yeah. It's real easy to remember where we are. If you see exit 95 on 95, you are really close and you probably need to be pulling off because we got a Brightleaf <laughs> Country Store up here. Y'all come in and see us. We got all our products. Um, we even have uh, local pasture raised grass fed beef. We own farmland, have a farm where we're doing some of this stuff. And uh, you guys just come on by. We're between exit 95 and exit 90 on 95. So if you're making that trip, just swing on in. The yeah. store does look really good. You guys are just building it when I first came. Uh, but there, so tell us about the wood on there. What kind? What's the story on the wood that's in that? The general story. It, it is from tobacco barns. So mm -hmm. you know, staying true to the heritage, uh, a bunch of tobacco farmers helped put Carolina Packers together in the early years. And so we wanted, when you walked into the front store, we wanted it to feel like I'm in a tobacco barn. So that was the goal. Yeah. So we we got some uh, folks to help us do that. All right. And then you know, everybody wants to know: Is Big Hot Dog going to come in and buy up Brightly? Is Big hot dog going to take over one day? I, I would say uh, absolutely, unequivocally, no. Yes. No, there's right. no way. We will stay doing exactly what we plan to do, what we've been doing. Yet. Keeping it real, keeping it Joko. All right, I, I can't talk anymore with this hot dog sitting in front of yeah, me. Yeah, I got to get into the hot dog, and you too. Yep. My friend, yep. good to see you again. Thanks, Billy. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody.